Hey, today we're going to do a repair on a Airstream 300 1983. It's a P30 Chevy chassis. What we're going to do is replace the rear brakes. Alright, so these things are super heavy. It's not like a car. And I always make sure I have multiple ways it's being held up. Each one is worthy by itself of holding it up. So I got the leveler there holding it up. I got a jack on the back. Plus I'm going to put these two jack stands under. So I got three ways of doing it. Now, even with all my redundancy, uh, when I was doing the other side, the motorhome fell off its jack stands. And I'll show you a picture of that. But uh, luckily I had put a wheel one of the wheels underneath the motorhome and it fell on that wheel otherwise I would have been screwed because the axle would have hit the pavement and would have wrecked the threads and it would have just been awful so you really gotta you know be careful with your the way you suspend this thing while you're working on it okay you can see where the uh, let's see I forget what the airbag comes down there on this uh, cross beam here I'm just gonna jack it up right on there. Now you do have, lev if you have the air motor home, you do have levelers too that you can use to jack up the, the rig. Uh, I am gonna do that as well, but where I'm parked right now, um, the asphalt's kinda soft and I don't wanna wreck it, the asphalt, so um, I'm gonna jack this up first and then I'll use the levelers on a piece of wood to kinda disperse the load. If I just try to bring the levelers down right now, it, there's not enough room. They won't come down. So I'm going to jack it up first, and I'm going to also back, have a backup with the, with the levelers, and then I'm also going to use jack stands. Yeah. Okay, so before I even take the wheel off, you can see I got the jack here under this beam. I got a jack stand there also under the beam. I don't know if you can see back in here, but I got the uh, another jack stand right under the axle. And then over there I got the, uh, uh, the leveler. So I got, what, four things holding this thing up? But I'm telling you, you don't want to mess around. Taking off the wheel. So these lug nuts are one inch. So I got a one inch socket with a breaker bar. Because you might do yourself a favor now. I got this at Harbor Freight for 10 bucks. So. But sometimes, depending on where you had it last, it could be a real bugger getting these things off. But the breaker bar really helps. You might need an extension to bring it out to here, but uh, here that I did it. With, I was able to do it with one of these, but it was tough. And then I went out and bought this, so I'm ready for next time. Good. All right, so this is just a big kind of facade to make it look like a big chrome wheel. Just, uh, just that kind of ugly underneath and there's Paula these tires are heavy but they'll just come right off like that there this one's giving me a little trouble One thing to note when you put these back on, you want to make sure you line up the holes. So they both have holes like this, and if you have them cockeyed, then this won't come out. And you won't be able to, anyway, it'll, I did that on the other side. The holes need to line up, just a note. Okay, one thing that's going to be key here is some kind of bucket or receptacle for all your parts. 
I'm telling you, you lose one of these nuts and you make yourself crazy and you waste all kinds of time trying to find it. All right, so here we have our hub in the middle. This is gonna have to come off. We have a rotor back here. The hub and the rotor are fused together with the lug nuts. And we got a caliper on here. Now for my particular repair, I've decided to go ahead and replace the caliper too. This is such a bugger to get this all apart. The calipers were only 40 bucks, 45 bucks. So I figure, give me new calipers, the whole nine yards. Part of this repair also is replacing the master cylinder, which was leaking. So I gotta bleed the brakes anyway. I might as well just put a whole new caliper on and I'm good to go. All right. So got this stuff from the brake place called Free All. It's supposed to be the best for loosening stuff up. Probably your wheel is, it's all nasty in there with rust and everything. The other thing is when we open this up, lots of fluid comes out. You want to be ready with something like this. I put this cardboard down too because this is a storage place that we have this thing. I don't want to be getting fluid all over their pavement. Uh, also, it's nice on the back when you're crawling under here. So I'm just going to give this a shot in all the joints, you know, all the things I'm going to take off. And then you might want to take a look up in here if you can get in here. But right up in here, you have to get up and over the brake. There's a there's a nut here where the brake line connects. You can give that a shot. And then one other thing, if you look down under here, there's a hex screw and like a shim in here that holds the caliper in place. You just give that a hit right in there. because you're going to have to free that up. Okay, at, at the top of the caliper here, kind of keep in mind how this kind of comes in. It can be confusing later. It kind of comes in and curves like that. There's a little ridge on this thing that's facing up. Anyway, there's a little nut here. It's a 7 16 And you just take this off. Now this might spew some brake fluid, so I'm going to get ready my thing under here so that's that now you want to keep track of this guy because they don't give you a new one I'm just screwing it back in there so I don't lose it but that's that not too much came out of there so no big deal all right, now we're gonna take that, pound that shim out, and then this whole caliper should come apart. Yeah? Okay, so this is a, a note. This is a very messy job. This is unbelievably messy. You wanna wear your Sunday worst. And uh, I got gloves on too. I mean, it's just a nasty job. So the way this thing works in here, this is these, you're gonna have to take the whole uh, hub off and the bearings and the a even the axle has to come out there the way these units work is there is there is no grease in here it's all um, oil from the pumpkin so when I jack this up I only jacked up one side of the bus here it's kind of lean in that way so my hope is not too much oil will come out of here but when we did the other side it just poured out all over the place and it was nasty stuff really stinks too it's not like normal oil so really it's gonna be a messy job all right so next thing we're gonna do is pull out this little shim that holds the, the uh, caliper in and for that you need a quarter inch um, Allen screw or Allen wrench we can stick this in here All right, so that just comes out of there like that. It's really tight, you really gotta work on it. But uh, that's this guy. If you're buying a new caliper like me, you don't need to worry about this, because they give you a new one. But now there's a metal shim in here that we're gonna have to tap out. Uh, and once we do that, uh, this whole caliper will come apart. However, that nut that we did up on top here, we'll have to take that out first so we don't 
stress on the brake line. Yeah. All right, so there's, to get it started, I just kind of beat on the thing itself just to free it up a little. It kind of went like that. And then there's like a flat piece here, but then up on the top of it, it's a little thicker. So I'm gonna try that. Wow, man, this thing's in there. I'm not moving that, buddy. That's not. Stop it. So my screwdriver, the shaft doesn't go all the way up through to the very end. So I'm not really getting a true blow to this thing with my hammer. So I got an old extension. I'm going to try to do this with. Stick that right in there. See if I can tap this out. This is proven to be a bugger, man. Okay, getting a little traction. Can you see that? Got like a quarter inch there. Um, there's a hole here. I'm gonna try going in that hole and see if that does something. Getting a little more movement. Yeah. This thing's got to come all the way out though. Alright, you can kill it for now. So I'm kind of putting this free all in here too just to try to help. You can see I'm making progress. By uh, putting it in the hole here. Probably could do this now too. I don't know. But. Uh, done okay that's out of there all right, all right. so I hit it kind of hit it down a little bit and then like that and that gets it right off of there let me see what our brakes were like they were pretty bad, almost down to the rivets, so there was time to do them. Now, one thing to note is on the other side, they had more than double of this left. So that, that's a sign there's something wrong with this caliper. It doesn't recede very well. So it's best that I'm replacing the calipers. For 40 bucks, I recommend you do it too. Actually, 90 once you get two of them. But Anyway, that's that. All right, we're gonna have to take these nuts off and then uh, take this cover off and then the actual, have to take the axle out, believe it or not. So, yeah, these come off pretty easy. I gave it a shot of that free all. These are really easy to get out, so no big deal. You can kill it. So these guys all have a lock washer on them. Definitely want to keep track of these. Uh, use a screwdriver and kind of pry this open. This is where you can get tons of this oil coming out. You want to have your receptacle there. Now this is one thing to know. There's kind of a washer here. And I'm not sure about if I need to put silicone silicone on here or what when we seal it back up. I didn't do it on the other side. But if this oil leaks out of there and that pumpkin gets low on oil, it could be really bad. So I gotta it's something I gotta research. Anyway, next this guy comes out and it's ugly. All right, so you can just stick a screwdriver in here and kind of pull this out. It's a funny feeling. 
you can feel where it it kind of falls a little bit in the over in the pumpkin so there's a spline there that it connects to now some models I've heard mine doesn't do this but some models I've heard have a clip on the other end like a C clip, C clip or whatever to hold that end so this won't come out my model it just pulls right out but you might if, if it's not coming out then you have to take your pumpkin apart and release it lovely ain't it so we had a little thing set up here just to make sure we have a place to put it down so we don't want any dirt getting on that okay that's it now look at this it's lovely huh There's a series of uh, nuts in here that hold the hub on, and I just, there's probably a better tool for this, but um, I'm just using a hammer and a screwdriver to kind of get it loose. Once you get it loose, it should turn pretty easily because this is so well oiled in here. So then what I do is I take up needle nose pliers and stick it in there and do that. Alright, so once you get this second ring off of here, this one comes off easier. But once you get it off, so what I like to do is um, I kind of... I think these are the same, so I'll just put them in the order that they were when I had them on there because I just don't like to mess things up. Anyway, now this whole hub will just pull off. There is one more plate back in here, but it's really hard to get out and there's no reason to because it just comes off when you do that. So that's that. And then I just store them like this and that way they're in the exact same order that I got them out of here so I can't screw anything up and then this whole hub just comes off like that oh that's nasty but oh well glad we have the cardboard I guess so now what you need to do is um, separate this caliper or yeah this rotor from the hub and I'll show you that in a minute okay so now you gotta put all the the nuts back on and uh, what I do is I screw them down so they're like one turn proud of the stud because you're gonna hit on this you don't want to mesh mushroom anything out and now we just pound these through So full disclosure, I had one guy tell me that by hitting on these threads like that, you could compromise them in some way. Um, one guy told me that and it freaked me out and I asked like five other guys at auto parts stores and brake stores and stuff. And everyone else said if the thread goes on, it's fine. You know, you, this is standard procedure and you don't need to replace the lugs. If you want to be hyper vigilant, you could replace the lugs and the lug nuts as part of this procedure, but I chose not to. Alright, so once you get off, and then you take all the nuts off again, you, these things should just... Get rid of them. So notice I'm not hitting them directly because you don't want to do anything to damage these threads. So I'm just doing this, getting them in the middle. This guy's stubborn for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Huh? Go ahead, keep going. 
All right, so once you get the, all the lugs out of there, you can separate these two. You might have to beat it with a hammer a little bit still, but they'll come apart. So now you have your, your rotor and your hub separately. Now we just put it all back together. 